Fiat 500's been with us now for 14 years, believe it or not. Back in 2007, this car came out to replace the Seicento and the previous Cinquecento. 14 years on and they're still building it. There's a new one coming out that's electric, but they're not going to stop making the petrol model, which is exactly the same as this car that I'm in today. A 2012 Twin Air model of the 500. Now this is a spoiler warning, but I'm going to tell you right from the off that I like the Fiat 500 and I have ever since I first drove one in Europe somewhere on holiday back in 2014. The thing about the 500 is that it's quite an interesting car and despite the fact that they've now sold over 4 million of them worldwide, which is crazy, 300,000 plus in the UK alone, it still remains an interesting quirky car despite being so popular. And this particular model is even more quirky because it has the twin air engine which is a two-cylinder petrol engine with a turbo and 85 brake horsepower but two-cylinder is an extremely unusual configuration and this particular one has some very clever technology which I don't fully understand but it's to do with the inlet valves being controlled electronically and letting in the exact amount of air that the engine requires instead of it being just pumped in by the throttle body when you put your foot on the accelerator. But what that means is that this car is ostensibly really economical. I say ostensibly because like any turbo car, it's as economical as you want it to be. If you put your foot down and you use that turbo then you're not going to get the economy that they state, which is something like 68 mpg, which would be really impressive if uh, it really could achieve that. To make this a proper Italian car review, I feel like I need to just get in character slightly. Okay, now I'm feeling suitably Italian. All we need now is some uh, cut price, copyright free Ludovico and Einaudi style piano music to play over the top and then we've got a bona fide Italian car review uh, being served up. So why do I like this twin air engine? Well, the first thing is, sounds absolutely brilliant. Let's get rid of that. Well, 0 to 60 in 10.6 seconds in a car that weighs just around 930 kilos. As you'd expect to drive, it's just super easy around town. Steering is light. The whole car's tiny. You can see the back window behind me there, and it, not much behind me. The ride's pretty good. Can be a bit bouncy, but I mean, it's well set up to just uh, nip around town, as you'd expect. So there's a bunch of buttons on the steering wheel, and one of them. I looked at it and I was like, that, that looks like a Microsoft Windows logo. I was like, oh, well, that can't be, can't be right. But uh, yes, it is. And they had some integration with basically some sort of cut down Windows operating system and Windows phones and Bluetooth. Windows phones have kind of died a death a long time ago, but it does seem to still do something. Help. The commands available are message reader. Settings, media player, or cancel. Open Microsoft Excel. Please repeat. Make a new spreadsheet. No message. Open Solitaire. So because the 500 is so small, you kind of feel like you're part of the car, like you are one with the car, to use a, a bit of a cliche, cliche term. The steering isn't, it's not sharp, it's a little bit numb, but when you go around a corner, you feel like you can just chuck the car around, and because there's, there's hardly any car around you, behind you or in front of you, it kind of feels like you are, you are taking the corner as part of the car, and that, that's super enjoyable. 
but the, the weird thing about this engine, this two cylinder twin air engine, it, you, you do need to keep the revs quite high. When you let it drop down to sort of 2000 and you're on a slight hill, it, it sounds like it's chugging along. You get that vibration at like taxi drivers when they're driving at uh, 1000 RPM to get the optimum fuel economy. Well, this car sounds like that at 2000. So everything's shifted by about a thousand, so where you would normally change up um, at about three, you really need to keep the revs going if you want to make any progress. Once you do, it's actually not, not too bad, it's quite quite nippy, but anyway, the positive side of that is you get to hear the uh, sound of the twin air, which is kind of like a purring cat. I'm detecting a lot of uh, creaks and rattles. The interior is a bit of a mixed bag because it's actually worn really well and in the 40,000 miles this car's done it um, the whole interior looks kind of new. There's a couple of scratches on this big piece of plastic but there's a lot of creaks and rattles as you go over undulations and small potholes and bumps. A, a new tactic um, I'm going to try. Press the like button. Go on. Just press it now, it's the one that looks like this. Cheers. Now because this car's been around for such a long time, there have been a bunch of different special editions over, over the years and the favourite one I found was the team up they did with the Fashion House Diesel because there's a Fiat 500 by Diesel but you can get it in petrol, so you could have uh, at the time ordered a petrol Fiat 500 by diesel or a uh, diesel Fiat 500 by diesel. I just imagine it started to get a little bit confusing. I really like what they did with the dials, having just basically circles each each thing. So you've got the speedometer on the outer circle, the rev counter in the middle circle, and then the fuel and temperature on the inner one, along with the trip computer and so on. I think that just looks pretty cool and well it's just a good design because it makes use of the space it's only a tiny car and there's not much space in front of you so so it's supposed to get 68 miles per gallon now it's a slightly unfair test because i've just been driving around town with it but i've been getting 27 miles per gallon i imagine i could get that closer to 40 or 45 but 68 seems unobtainable now to have a little look around the interior and as I say it's it's a really well reimagined job of an old school kind of car with this great big slab of I mean it's supposed to look like metal but it's definitely plastic in the middle but it's co co color coded to the rest of the car and then you've got the gear shift which is right to your hand like a Honda Civic Type R. The, the only thing that I looked at in here and I was like what the heck is that was uh, this button at the top of the dash just here you can just see it in the corner and I was like uh, oh I wonder what that does and I pressed it and my finger just went <laughs> all the way in the dash and I was like what the heck is that um, so I had to look it up and it's where you can mount a sat nav to the, the top of the car so it's not really a button it's a, a mounting point for sat nav yeah and then in this car you, you've got a a nice sunroof. Oh, it's only tilt. That's a shame. Storage wise, there are four cup holders, but they're really small, like they were designed for Italian espresso. So I've got this little espresso cup here and that fits perfectly fine, but some of my bigger, bigger bottles like this, the, uh, the larger fat bottom bottle does not fit in any of the cup holders and it doesn't fit in the door pockets which are narrow and long. There's a weird little tiny storage space on the side of the gear column which you could probably fit some credit cards in. Now there's no glove box so to speak just a gap in the dashboard where you can place things that will be on show. Uh, now is as good a time as any to ask Backseat JJ what he thinks about the back of this car. So, uh, how are you doing this time in the back? 
Well, I can't say I uh, expected it to be particularly spacious back here, and uh, I was right. It's uh, it's not. The headroom is okay. Like, yeah, I can actually kind of sit upright just about. Uh, the headrests do nothing because my head touches the back of the roof before it touches the headrests. Um, my leg room's non-existent, my knees are around the back. It would be quite uncomfortable over a long journey. So yeah, um, I mean it's not as bad as the Hyundai Coupe that I tested and obviously it's not as good as the Volkswagen Arteon from last time which was fantastic back here. So um, overall not bad really for the size of car but um, I wouldn't suggest adults back here. Just just children really but hey what did he expect he got in the back of this it's tiny now the, the other thing that i found weird about this car was there's no way to open the boot from inside there's no button or anything to press to open the boot if you don't have the remote key the only way to open the boot is if you've unlocked the car and in, to go around the back and press the button under the handle but on this car it's broken and it's quite a common problem apparently so uh I've been only been given the, the non-remote key, so I, the only way I can get into the boot is to fold the rear seats down, which, by the way, you can fold the rear seats down, so that's nice, uh, and then go into the boot and press this little switch on the latch and it opens the boot, so uh, not ideal and, uh, like I say, a common issue. Despite its retro looks, it, it kind of feels like you're driving something brand new and modern around, and I think it's because they're still making this car and it still looks almost the same. If you want a fairly cheap car that that completely blends in and looks modern, then this is a good one. But that's a, a general thing with cars that have got a retro design and they don't age as badly. I would say that of all the sort of Jaguars of, of the mid-2000s, like the X-Type and the S-Type, they look alright today simply because they, they don't have a design of the time, they don't have styling cues from from their time and therefore they still look like they could be from today. Now interestingly this car was tested by Euro NCAP, the crash test safety people, back when this car was new in 2007 and it achieved the maximum five stars which was great but since this car's been around for 14 years they needed to retest the Fiat 500 as it was still being sold so in 2017 they did so under the new test procedures it achieved only three stars so although it was a very safe car for its day when it was new now if you're looking at uh, a newer one just bear in mind that they're not uh, safe by to, by modern standards now it's not as bad as the Fiat Punto the Grande Punto that became the Punto because that uh, was a five-star car back in, in 2005 and uh, that was retested and got zero stars I'd be interested to hear from any Fiat 500 owners that might watch this. If you've got one, then uh, what do you think of it? Do you enjoy the car? Has it been a good car to you? Yeah, I'm always interested to hear from owners of these cars that I review. So let me know what you think. As always, if you've got this far, then you've made it through. Thank you very much for watching. Massively appreciated. And I'll uh, see you in the next video.